we're so glad that you've joined us here for Christ Church Online tonight. Uh, we pray that this during this time you'll be able to have a boost of inspiration and feel deeply God's love for you and how God has called you to live large in your life this season and this time. We want to invite you as we engage in worship together uh, to join us in the chat to let us know that you're here there's a invite button there that you can invite some people uh, to join us tonight uh, there's also a button there for you to connect with us so we can know that you're here and be praying with and for you and then you can also just type in the chat and let us know where you're uh, logging in from so that we can kind of know uh, that you're here with us now as we begin our worship together we want to invite you into a posture of prayer and of praise there on your screen, there's a button that for requesting prayer at any time in the service. If you want someone to pray with you, we have prayer partners standing by. You can click that button and they'll be ready to pray with you. And as we worship together in song, etc., you can use the icons there. You can clap hands, you can raise hands, or you can even physically do that at home as we sing together praise to our God. Let us sing. I raise a hallelujah. of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise i 
Greetings. Um, it is a gift to gather with you. Um, we are in a series, uh, Living Large, here at Christ Church, and uh, today uh, we are looking at living large as family. And one of the things that I know about family is that we don't get to choose. Um, we don't get to choose what family we're born into. We do not get to choose which family or which families raise us, but we do get to choose how we love and care for one another. And so as we continue looking at God's word, our text for today uh, from Paul's uh, epistle in Ephesians, I want to share with you Ephesians, the second chapter, beginning with verse 19. And it reads in this way. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is God's word for us, God, his children. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, indeed, your spirit dwells with, in, and among us. Your desire for us, your children, is far greater than perhaps we even comprehend. I pray that we will grow deeper in our understanding of your word and a deeper commitment to living out your word so that indeed your light and your love would be more fully realized here on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And so the first word in the text, consequently, it says, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers. And that word, consequently, it caught my attention because what it means is as a result of or because of. And so I thought to myself, so because of, as a result of, we are no, of what? that we are no longer uh, foreigners or strangers. And so then I went back to the beginning of this particular uh, passage and I looked and it began to um, add some context to why it is that we are no longer foreigners and strangers. It says, starting in verse 11, it says that we are called to remember that we were formerly uh, Gentiles by birth and we were called uncircumcised. And so it lifts out uh, the reality that um, at one point there is a notion of what it means to be an outsider. And it goes on to then talk about what it means to become a citizen of um, Israel, to become a part of God's community. And it goes on in this way, it says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. It goes on to say that his purpose, this is good, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross. When we hear this, we are called to remember that there are those who have considered others as outsiders and there are those who consider themselves as outsiders because of how this world has been structured. And yet the word of God has called us to be one. If ever there was a time where we needed to understand and not just understand, but to fully embrace and live out this word of God, it is now. 
God never created us to be a people who are divided. God never intended us to be separated by law and legalism and politics. That's not God's will for our lives. God desires for us to all be fellow citizens. The word for fellow citizens is some polities. And that Greek word means to possess the same citizenship. You know, it is important for us as Christians to lead by example in terms of what it means to embrace one another, what it means to care for one another, what it means to desire the best for each other. When you think about God's word in this text, it is one that um, it goes on to say in him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple to the Lord. And so when I look at that particular text, um, he's talking about a building, but he's talking about us as human beings. He's talking about what we possess to be the temple. Um, if we study God's word, we are called to remember that our body is the temple and how we use our body uh, to model what it means to be a part of creation and humanity and how we use the gifts that God has given us uh, to do the work and the will of God, uh, to be vessels of his word. You know, throughout the Bible, there are a multitude of examples of what it means to trust God, what it means to extend yourself beyond the community that is common to you. I think about Joseph and I think about when Joseph was a younger boy and how he embraced God and, and God had uh, called him to, to do some special things. And yet, uh, as he was celebrating his call, his family didn't quite understand understand him. And so he became isolated and further he became persecuted and left abandoned by his family. Now, Joseph was taken in by, I would consider foreigners, but those foreigners cared for him in a way that his family didn't even care for him. And fast forward in that narrative in Genesis, um, he became in charge of that foreign community that embraced him. There are so many lessons to be learned there. When you hold fast to who God is and who you are in God, God will use you in places and spaces to break barriers and strongholds and put you in places and positions to even better the people that you left behind. Now, fast forward in that story, Joseph's family became dependent on him and Joseph's family uh, found him. Joseph helped his family and in doing so, he was reconciled in ways that God shows us that we are to be reconciled as human beings one to another. I submit to you as a part of a biological family and as part of the greater family uh, here on earth to do what is necessary to be reconciled to God, recognizing that indeed you are the temple of God, that God is moving in and through your life to uh, equip you to be who you need to be uh, here on earth. And then you can look at more stories in the Bible. You can look at the story of Esther in the Bible. She was a Jewish girl. She was in the home of a Persian king. And look what happened. Absolutely unimaginable that a Jewish poor girl and a Persian king would come together to do the work of God in that way. Church, we're called to yield our agendas, our opinions, our worldly thoughts about what should be and what shouldn't be and allow God to use us because no one should feel like a stranger. No one should feel like a foreigner. No one 
should feel unwelcome or devalued. God has invited all of us to be fellow citizens. He is creating in each of us a dwelling place by and through the power of the Holy Spirit to celebrate what it means to be part of Christ. Hear God's word, yield to God's word, honor God's word, live out God's word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be blessed. Amen. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and God's household. Thank you, Pastor Michelle, for that great word and reminding us of what Christ has done in our lives, making peace between us and God so that we might be at peace with all God's children of every shape, color, size, demographic, etc. I wonder how you have perhaps felt a stranger in your life. In what context were you made to feel that way? And how did God bring you to a place of peace and belonging in that context? Maybe you can uh, chat and uh, put something in the chat there to say how you have maybe experienced that strangeness and what God did for you in the midst of that. I wonder too how God might be calling you even now to be the peace, to be that bridge maker between communities of hostility. Maybe God has called you and placed you in a place where you can be the one to live out God's forgiveness, God's joy, God's love in a way that helps bring people together so that all might know that through Christ, they have been made family uh, in God's household. Maybe you can add that in the chat as well. As we enter into a time of worship and praise now, uh, we invite you to continue to chat or you can request prayer using the request prayer button there where our prayer partners are standing by to pray with and for you. Would you join us now as we close our time together in song and you can continue chatting throughout this time. Let us go now to God. Like a feather, find my one. 